Matthew chapter 17, we're going to look at verse 24 through 27. Matthew 17, verses 24 through 27. I'm in a hurry today because i got a, a long ways to go and we don't have a, a long time to get there, amen? So Matthew 17, 24. If you have your Bible, uh, I would love for you just to open up the Word of God with me and we'll read together out loud. I, I like it when you read with me because then I know at least you have uh, read a little bit of the Bible, amen? We need to read the Bible more, amen? We need more of the Word of God in our heart so that we might not sin against Him, right? We, we need more of the Word of God in our hearts so we can have direction for our future. We need more of the Word of God in our life so that we can have a better attitude, amen? So we can have a smile on our face, we can have joy in our heart, uh, love flowing from our mouth, amen? So we can speak words of encouragement to one another, amen? Not just declaring I'm blessed and highly favored of the Lord, but really being blessed and highly favored of the Lord, amen? <laughs> amen? So, so Matthew 17, if you have your Bible... Uh, uh, why, don't, why don't we just uh, stand up and read together this morning? Let's just do that. Let's honor the Word of God. And then you can sit down uh, the whole rest of the time if you want. That's okay. Matthew 17, 24. I'm going to expect a loud voice. There's some people right now in, in, in uh, India that are listening to us. There's some people uh, in, in Pakistan that are listening. Amen? They want to hear that voice. All right? You ready? Real loud, real loud, real clear. Ready? Matthew 17, 24. Matthew 17, 24. Here we go. And when they were come to Capernaum, they that received... That's pretty, pretty quiet. Y'all at the sporting events talk a lot louder than that. <laughs> it's pretty quiet. I can't hear you too well. Let's try it again. You ready? So just say, tell your neighbor, I can do better. Can you? Go ahead. Here we go. You ready? And when they were come to Capernaum, they that received tribute money came to Peter and said, Doth, doth not your master pay tribute? And he saith, Yes. And when he was come into the house, Jesus prevented him, saying, What thinkest thou, Simon? Of whom do the kings of the earth take custom or tribute? Of their own children or of, of strangers? And Peter saith unto him, Of strangers. And Jesus saith unto him, Then are the children free. Can we stop right there and just go, yeah? yeah? Come on. Come on. Verse 27. Notwithstanding, lest we should offend them, go, go thou to the sea and cast an, an hook, and take up the fish that cometh, first cometh up, and when thou hast opened his mouth, thou shalt find a piece of money that take and give unto them for me and for thee. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Let's pray. Father, I pray that you touch us from the top of our head to the sole of our feet. Open our eyes, our ears, our heart, our mind, that we can see, hear, know, and understand something brand new from the Word of God today. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Go ahead, on your way to your seat, just say uh, my sermon title. You ready? It's a good one. You ready? Me and my big mouth. Go ahead and say it to your neighbor. <laughs> Me and my big mouth. You may be seated. Amen. In the presence of the Lord. Ah. Uh, <laughs> Me and my big mouth. You know, Cap Capernaum is just a little fishing village right on the Sea of Galilee. It was just a, a little place, right? But it was, it was not just any place. It was a special place because Jesus was there. Amen? Amen? And so, so I, I, I like, the, I like the, the boldness of Peter, right? Uh, I, I think Peter... Uh, is, is not just a, a bold guy, but he's also a little dumb sometimes, right? So he just assumes things. He runs, uh, uh, runs right into circumstances without uh, really following th through with his mind a little bit. He, he's quick to go there, and then he says things, and then he has to repent from things. Like, like uh, throughout Peter's life, we see him uh, being ram rambunctious, is I guess a, word, a good word to, to say. He was... Uh, he was uh, 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 really a uh, uh, bold man. Amen? I like to think of Peter as a prototype preacher, though. Because anybody that preaches the Word of God is going to be a little bit like Peter. We're going to be a little bit bold, a little bit out in front, and sometimes we've got to take a couple steps back and go, is that really what God wants? You know? And, and so he's like a prototype preacher. He's not uh, skilled, necessarily. He was a good fisherman. Right? But, but Jesus just found him 
uh, doing what he always did, fishing, and he said, follow me and I'll make you a fisher of men. I'll teach you something different. Amen? That's what God does. God teaches us different things. He teaches us how to act different, how to talk different, how to walk different, how to be different. Amen? I want to be different. I want to be whatever God wants me to be. Amen? Because I know that if I'm going to follow him, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be fun, right? An adventure, right? I, I don't want to get up tomorrow and have the same thing happen that happened yesterday. That would get boring. I, I want something new in my life every day. I want to follow the Spirit of God that's in me to a new thing, right? To a new adventure, to a new relationship, right? To, to a new culture in my life. Amen? I want, I want God to be God. You know, and uh, I, I like that the fact that Jesus knows everything. In this story, he knows everything. He knows what, what the guys were saying. He knows what Peter was saying. And I also like the fact that Jesus stops Peter before he comes in the house. He stopped him at the door, at the door of the house. He stopped him and said, uh, hey, Peter, I got to talk to you about something. And Jesus, uh, Jesus uh, Peter, I know Peter was like, oh, oh what did I do this time? <laughs> Have you ever had, have you had the Lord uh, speak to you through a scripture verse or through a, a preacher or through your wife or through a co-worker? Have you ever had the Lord speak to you and you go, uh-oh, how, how did that happen? And, and you begin to reevaluate some things in your life, amen? That's what was happening with Peter right there at this moment. He had to reevaluate what he had already said, what he had already formed. I, I, I think that Peter was trying to stick up for Jesus. I think he was trying to stick up for Jesus. Did you know uh, the temple tax that, they're, that we're talking about in, in today's value was, is about 27 cents per person. Every, every uh, uh, Jewish man 20 years, old and, uh, 20 years and older had to pay this tax. 27 cents for us, right? Most of us, I wanted to do it today, but I didn't have any money left, so I was going to bring a whole bunch of quarters, and I was just going to throw them on the stage, and I'd say, come and, come and take your quarter, right? Because cause most of us have a quarter stuffed in our car somewhere that doesn't mean anything to you, right? You, you, it's just, it's just a, you can't even buy nothing for a quarter. 27 cents, what are you going to buy? And when, when I was growing up, we had this song. He said, it, was like, it went like this. It's kind of crazy. It's a, ba 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 bubblegum. Ba -hoo, ba -hoo, ba -hoo, ba -hoo, my mama gave me a nickel, told me to buy a pickle. I didn't buy a pickle. Instead, I bought bubblegum. Ba -hoo, ba -hoo, ba -hoo, bubble gum. See, see, see. <laughs> That's a nickel. We can't buy nothing for a nickel today. But, but, but 27 cents? And I like I liked that Jesus was worried about the little thing. Right? Often we're worried about big things. And not little things. But Jesus is worried about the little detail in your life. Amen? Amen. All the way down to the 27 cents. Amen? Amen? All the way down to the little details. Amen? All the way down to the little details. And so, so Jesus just asks all these leading questions in this story. He keeps asking uh, question after question. I, I, I don't want to really go back and reread the questions, but I want to ask you a question. Are you good at asking questions? Right? Do you ask questions or do you just do stuff all the time? And don't ask yourself, why did I do this? Why do I keep doing this all over, over and over and over? Why do I keep feeling the same way over and over and over? Why do I always stay in the same cycle in my life? What about, what do I got to do to change, right? What do I got to do to move forward? What does freedom look like? Because Jesus says uh, to Peter, he says, uh, do, do kings uh, take the tax of Strangers or of children? And Peter says, of strangers. And Jesus says and declares, I believe, even for us, then the children are free. I want you to say that with me. Say, the children, children. Are, free. are free. Are free. Amen. So, so, so uh, me and my big mouth. No matter what you do in your life, no matter where you go, you're going to have a meeting with Jesus. Amen? Amen? The Bible says in Isaiah 45, uh, 22, it says, Look unto me, and be ye saved, all the ends of the earth. God, God is over all of the earth. I want you to say that with me. God is over all the earth. Not just you, not just me, but all of the earth. Amen? Say, so, For I am God, and there is none else. I love that truth. 
There is no other God save our God. Amen? Save Yahweh. We, there is no other God like our God. Amen? We can sing a song about it. But there is no other God. There are a lot of other little gods. Little people make little gods. But we got a big God who made us. Amen? We got a God who created the, the planet called Earth. The sun, the moon, the stars. Everyone He knows by name. He created the seasons and the, 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 the things we don't even understand. You know, atoms and molecules and uh, uh, fingers and toes and how they work and how the mind comprehends something. How, how, how amazing this body is that we have. How it, it repairs itself. It, we feed it junk food like McDonald's and it still makes blood and energy and it still, still gets up in the morning. It still goes and does stuff. It gets tired, but it keeps re, 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 rejuvenating itself somehow, some way. I, I don't understand all of that, but I know that God created us. Amen? Because He's God. He's God. He said, he said uh, in verse 23, Isaiah 45, 23, I have sworn by myself, and the word has gone out of my mouth, in righteousness, and it shall not return, that, ev that, that unto me every knee shall bow, and every tongue shall swear. Every one of us is going to give account to God. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. We're all going to bow our knee. All of the earth, every person on this planet will one day bow, bow their knee to God. Isaiah was standing there prophesying this, and, and he was prophesying, uh, and there was a king that wasn't even a, 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 an Israeli king. He was a, a pagan king. And God was going to use a pagan king to fulfill his word. Amen? Come on. God can use anybody, anywhere, anytime. Amen? You don't have to be saved to be used by God. Amen? Every one of us is subject. Amen? God will use circumstances in our life. He'll use people. He'll, he'll, he'll even use us. Amen? He even used my wife sometimes. God is my shepherd, right? He's my shepherd. And, and, and uh, I want to spend just a moment. I want to talk about this little bitty moment that Jesus has. He says, he says before he sends Peter fishing, he says, he said, uh, the children are free. In verse 27, he says, lest we should offend them, go fishing. Bring some money back. And he says, he says, he says so I want to say it a little, a little bit different. I want to say it like this. A good fence defines our offense. Amen? Amen. A good fence defines our offense. Often we put a fence up to keep somebody, like a dog, in, right? Or to set the boundary. But a good fence defines our offense. Uh, I want you to say this with me. Say, I, I am, am a, Christian. a Christian. Say it again. I, I am, am a, a Christian. Christian. Say it like this. Say, I'm offended. You ever notice that we get offended so easily nowadays? Do you ever notice that the world is offended at everything now? Yeah. We we don't we don't have peace in the in the, not just in the country but in our homes uh, at our, our workplaces. We're just all offended. We're always offended. Yeah. We're so easily offended nowadays. Right. And and uh, I, I just want to declare to you that there are powers at work. Come on now. But I choose to work to worship the greater power. There, there are, there, what about you? Yeah. See, see, because if we choose to worship the greater power, even if there's another power at work, we will find ourselves offensive. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen? And so being offensive is not bad if you do it right. I, I, I think Jesus did it right, right? He said, I don't want to offend these people. I want you to go and get the money. But he didn't reach in his own pocket to get it. He, he went to the ocean or the, the, the sea and got a fish and provided a miracle, right, that provided for the, the temple tax for him and Peter, right? And so, so <laughs> I, I'm not a Democrat and I'm not a Republican. I'm a Christian. Amen? I, I, I live in the United States and I'm a citizen of the United States of America. Amen? I am. I am. But I am a member of the kingdom of God. 
And the law that, that governs my life is in the Word of God. Amen? Amen? Sometimes the country might be going to hell. Amen? And that's okay. I'm not going to hell with them. Amen? I'm going to stand and declare that I have a king that sits on a throne. Amen? In heaven and in my heart. Amen? And I'm going to follow him. Amen? No matter what. That's offensive. That's offensive. One day they'll probably come here and they'll say, uh, you know, Pastor Ever, you're, 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 you're preaching and it's hate speech. And they'll come and take me away in, in handcuffs. And I'll go to some jail maybe. Okay? But I'm going to tell you, you know what? That's called persecution. We don't know about persecution. We know about feelings, though, in this country. We know about feelings. And we... We live by our feelings. And that's why we get offended so much. Amen? Because we got feelings. Amen? Oh. Instead of building back better or making America great, why don't we try living by faith? Amen. Hello? Yeah. Why don't we do that? Why don't we try living by faith? We, we, don't, we don't even live by faith anymore because we, we try to do it our way, the way we want it done. Amen? It's not about your way, my way, their way, or the other way. Amen? It's about His way. Yahweh. Yahweh. Woo. The whole world is salty. Yeah. Amen? Amen? But we're supposed to be the salt and the light. Amen? Amen? Amen. Let's be different. Go ahead and just tell, tell your neighbor right now. I don't know, there's something about you, but you look different. Because <laughs> faith is your priority. Faith is your priority. That's my priority. That's what I got up this morning. I, I got up here to sing to you today because faith is my priority. Okay. I'm very driven. I'm very driven. I have a lot of stuff that uh, I feel like God wants to do in my life. And so I'm driven, right? I, I get up, I put in lots of hours. I, I study a lot. I, I, I read, I pray, I, I, I work at uh, my career, I work at my calling because I want to be something. But I'm already something. Before I even did anything, I'm already something. God created me to be something. He created you to be something. We're all here to be something for His glory. Whew. Jonah, Jonah found out. Jonah found out uh, that no matter how hard you run from God, His reach is farther than you can run. Yay? Right? No, no matter how big your mouth is, there's a Bigger mouth and some fish somewhere that's going to come swallow you up. Amen. God, Jonah found out. He found out the hard way. Amen. He ran away. But, but it's written in the scripture so that we can learn from that. Amen. And know that God, if God called you to it, He's going to see you through it. Amen. Amen. I, I like the question uh, Jesus was probably declaring to Peter. He's like, whose temple is this anyways? Whose temple is... And this is a question that we should ask ourselves. Because we're the temple of the Holy Spirit. We are the temple... Point to yourself right now and just say, I'm the temple of the Holy Spirit. But I want you to ask the question, whose temple is it? See, see, because inside of you is the Spirit of God. The Spirit of the living God. The one who spoke and planets came out. There, there's power inside of you. And, I, and also, there's a flesh... There's flesh. And sometimes we listen to the Spirit, and sometimes we listen to the flesh. And I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, uh, sometimes the things we're offended about, we're not supposed to be offended about. Sometimes the things we're defending, we're not supposed to be defending. Come on. There's a balance of opposites at work in your life. Right? Flesh and Spirit. Whose temple is it anyways, though? It's His. 
My life belongs to Him. Paul says it different. He says, the life that I now live, I live unto Christ so that the glory, whatever happens through my life will bring glory to Him. Half a shekel. 27 cents. We are free today. We are free today. You've got to know who you are. You've got to know who you are. My name is Everett P. Bross III. I was born June 26, 1966. It was a special day when I was born. (laughs) I could feel the presence of God. Because God had a plan. Amen? God had a purpose. Amen? Then I started doing whatever I want to do. Just like you. Amen? But God still has a plan. Amen? But you've got to know who you are. In John chapter 1, verse 12, it says, it says, whoever receives Him, to them, He's going to give power to become the Son. Yeah. You, you get the power to become when you receive Him. Amen? Amen. We talked about it at the beginning of the message, right? How we have to receive Him. Receiving gifts, a good gift, is hard. It's really hard because we're not really good at receiving anything. Right. We're good at giving stuff. Giving advice. <laughs> giving attitude. Come on. We'll even give money. But receiving from God is something that we have to learn to do. Amen? But when we receive Him, we get the power to become. Amen? Amen? We get the power to become. Jesus uh, orders Peter to pay it anyways for both, both of them to avoid a bitter, offensive debate on the merits of his claim to be God. That's what, that's what he did. See, see he went from uh, uh, knowing and telling, right? From knowing to telling. Uh, often, often uh, when, when we find ourselves offended, when we find ourselves offended, I wrote this, I wrote it like this. Offended equals infection that prevents affection. Can I say it again? Offended equals an infection that prevents affection. Okay? Most of us can't be affectionate because we're offended. We have an infection of of offense in our life. And we can't even worship God anymore. Like, when's the last time you got in the middle of a worship service and all you did was feel the presence of God just flow and wash over your body and and you just got up and you said, Woo! God is good. God is good. Most of us are so offended that we don't even know how to be affectionate with our our neighbors and our brothers and our sisters because we're... We're so busy looking at the flaws all the time. Because that's what social media tells us right now. Be offended. Look at what they did wrong. Look at how they, they, they shouldn't have done it that way. They shouldn't have, we don't even hear news anymore. All we hear is propaganda. Just tell me what happened. Let me pray about it. Amen? Don't, don't tell me how I'm supposed to feel about something. See, but when I, when I serve Jesus... I, I, I get the Holy Spirit inside of me that's going to direct me, just like Peter. Go down and go fishing. Amen? Yeah. <laughs> Amen? I got one fisher person in the back. He'll, he'll go fishing. Edwin, let's go fishing. He's going to go fishing. Right? He loves fishing. You don't have to tell him twice. <laughs> he, he likes fishing. There's just something about it. He goes fishing. That's what Peter was. Peter was a fisherman. He was good at fishing. Fishing wasn't the problem. Offense is, though. Offense is. Right? So, so offended equals an infection in your life that prevents affection. Uh, the, the only answer that I have whenever you feel of, uh, an offense in your life this is my, my big, it's really big. It's really, really tough to really, you're going you're gonna to be like, whoa, that's really, really, really simple. 
Whenever you feel offended, drop it. That's all you can do. That's all you can do. Because otherwise, you're going to try to control somebody else. And that's manipulation and witchcraft and all kinds of other stuff. Just say it with me. Say it really loud. Say, drop it. Drop it. You got to drop it. See, you, you know what's crazy? Last night, someone called me. Someone called me at uh, 10 o'clock at night. They called me and they said, Pastor, <laughs> they had just got in a fight. Someone beat them up. And they said, they said, what am I going to do? 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 I said, you're going to have to drop it. I don't know what to do, I don't know what to do, I don't know what to do. And I said, number one, watch what you say. Yeah. Number two, realize that you are responsible for what you do. Yeah. Yeah. And number three, surrender to the authority in your life. Mm. Whoa, that's really deep, isn't it? Yeah. It's really deep. I got to watch what I say. Yes, I do. Because if I say everything that I feel like saying, guess what will happen? Nothing good. (laughs) Nothing good. Because I'm selfish. Stingy. Amen? I got to watch what I say. I've got to to surrender to the authority in my life. Amen? I've, I've I've got to be responsible for my own actions. This is such a big truth. I want you to say it with me. Everybody Everybody. is responsible responsible. for what they do. do. Doesn't it it just feel better when you can say that? (laughs) It's It's like, no, I don't have to worry about them anymore. They're responsible for their own actions. And you are responsible for your actions. I got a, I got an acronym for you. Ready? It's called WAR, right? WAR. W A R. The number one thing you got to do when you feel offended is you have to watch, wait, and weigh. You got to watch, wait, and weigh the event inside of you. You got to watch, wait, and weigh it. Okay? And then and the second thing, the A is you have, to, you, have to have, you have to know who has the authority. You have to accept that authority, and you have to act on that authority. Amen? Amen. And the R stands for take responsibility. You have to reform, and you have to release. Okay? So drop it. Amen? When you feel offended, you have to drop it. But you got to learn in the process of it, okay? Because otherwise you go from offense to offense. You're still going to go from offense to offense, though. It just be a different one. Not the same offense, okay? I don't want to fight with... I've been married for for a long time. I don't want to fight with my wife over the same thing. (laughs) Over and over and over. How about about God? I don't want to pray the same prayer to God over and over and over. I don't want to rehearse in my mind the same event over and over and over. I want to drop it. I want to move. I want to grow. I want to become something else. I want to receive from Him so I can have the power to become. Amen? Amen. The battle belongs to Him. 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 Not by power, not by might, but by the Spirit of God. Amen? That is at work inside of your life. Amen? All of our lives, we have been lied to. All of our lives. Because the children are free. Amen? We are free. We are free. We are free. Come on now. We are free. We are free. We are free. We are free. We are free from offense. We are bound by a lie, and the lie robs us 
of our joy, of our peace. Our heartbeat is less than created for. The, but the Spirit comes to restore. The Spirit comes to restore, right? Our focus, it should be on the things, our focus is on the things that we see and, and feel, not on the goodness of God. That's what our focus is. Our focus is off because of offense, right? Our, our God, because of offense, we disconnect from God. That's what we do. We disconnect from the power that's at work in our life. We, we, we don't walk it with Him. We're, we're walking away from the relationship instead of in relationship. Amen? Sin is the, is the abyss. It's the expansive rift that seems uncrossable because we are naturally unable to repair a spiritual dilemma. We need the Holy Spirit. I need the Holy Ghost. I need the Holy Ghost fire. We need the Holy Ghost. Our Father is the source and the supply. We are just a revelation away from the truth, though. Okay? Every one of us. Uh, Luke 3, 5 uh, through 6, it says, Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be brought low. And the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways shall be made smooth. And all flesh shall see the salvation of God. All of us, every one of us, all flesh will see the salvation of God. We're going to see Jesus. Amen? Amen? Every one of us. And at that moment, every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess that He is Lord. Amen? To the glory of, of God. We, we, we have to find our balance, right? The tightrope of trials, the balance pull of faith, I can see the guy walking on a tightrope, you know, 14 stories up. Got his faith. He's, he's focused, right? He's focused on the next step. He's focused. He don't want to fall. You got to make sure it's right. You got to be focused, right? Got to be focused. You got you to have faith. Say this with me. Say, I'm saved. I'm, saved. I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. I'm, with the Holy Ghost. I'm full of power. I'm full of power. And I'm looking. Amen? And so, so that means we're ready for promotion. Amen? Amen. I'm ready for promotion. Right? I, I was, uh, uh, a few weeks ago, I, I preached a message, a little message, and in that message, I, I, I was talking about how uh, David had red hair, and then his, his uh, great uncle had, had uh, Esau had red hair, and, uh, and how the elder served the younger, right? Jacob. Uh, was chosen and Esau was uh, discarded, right? And God, God chose the younger, uh, uh, and the elder had to serve the younger. And I, I like that, that truth because we're saved, we were born naturally first, and we were born spiritually second. And how that the elder, the, your body, you have to take your body and you have to submit it to the younger one itself, right? The spirit man that's inside of you. And you have to live out what the spirit says, right? Not what the flesh says. And so there's a lesson there for us. In Galatians 4.28 it says, uh, now, we bre now we brethren as Isaac was are the children of promise. Come on. That's so good right there. I could preach for about an hour just on that. Uh, uh, we, we are like Isaac was, right? Uh, children of promise. And 29 it says, but as but as then he that was born after the flesh persecuted him that was born after the spirit, even so it is now. Say, it's, it's just like that now. My, my flesh and my spirit don't like each other. Amen? Amen. This is true. It's true in our life. And, and, and nevertheless, what, what saith the scripture? Cast out the bondwoman and her son. For the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. So then, so then, brethren, we are not children of the bondwoman, but of the free. We are sons and not servants. I want you to say that with me. I'm a son and I'm not a servant. Okay? Esau sold his birthright.
to Jacob. Saul sold his purpose for pride and David took the crown. Amen? Where's, where's Jacob? Where's the Davids of today? Where's the Jacobs? Where's the Davids of today? Where are, where, where are the children of God today? Where are we at? Are, are we so offended that we can't live for Him anymore? I, I, I like this, this statement. It, it's counter, counter-religious, though. There are really no other le- new levels because you're saved or you're not. Right? Amen. We, we want to we build platforms and elevate people. God wants us to be sons. Amen? That's it. Yeah. He wants you to be saved and full of the Holy Spirit and walking unoffended. Amen? Okay. Amen. Stop trying to get and just receive. Right? I, I like this. We are receive able a receivable right we're we're able to receive we're able to receive because he gave us the power to receive that amen come on because of the blood of jesus because of the sacrifice uh uh before the foundation of the world in john 8 34 it says and jesus answered it said verily verily i say unto you john 34 john 8 34 Verily, verily, I say unto you, whosoever committeth sin is servant of sin. Let me read it again. Yeah. Whosoever, whosoever committeth sin is servant to sin. Pretty easy to understand, right? Yeah. If you sin, you're a servant to that sin. Right. right? And then it says in verse 35, And the servant abideth not in the house forever. And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the Son abideth forever. Amen? Amen. The Spirit. Come on now. This flesh will pass away, right? All all of the consequences of my life will pass away, but but the Spirit in me is going to live forever. Amen? Just like Jesus is going to abide forever. Amen? Amen? I got a relationship with God. And I'm going to put my hand in his hand. And he's going to go right through, all the way through the end of my days, all the way into eternity. And I never have to worry. And nothing can ever separate me from him. Amen? Amen. Come on. (sighs) Say it like this. I am most definitely free. free. Come on. You 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 don't sound like you believe it too much. Say it again. I am most definitely free free. Say it again. I am most definitely free. Amen? Come on. The blood of Jesus breaks chains. The blood of Jesus breaks chains. Amen? Come on. But the Word of God sets me free. Amen? Come on. Come on. I need the Word. I need the blood and the Word. Amen? I need both at work in my life. Faith is found in your confidence when all you see is trouble. You ever gone through something in your life and all you can see is the trouble? You ever been there? You're like, man, all I see is trouble. It's easy to do when we're in the flesh. But there's faith that ought to rise up that looks over the trouble and sees God who is able to take you up out of that. Amen? Amen. He's able to provide a way for it, for you, the way through it. Amen? And we have to walk by and not by. So, so whenever you find yourself getting into your feelings or getting into what you see, what do you have to do? You got to drop it. You got to drop it because that's offensive to the Spirit of God at work in your life. Amen? That's what starts separating us from our, uh, what God... That's, 
That's, that's what you're start, you start to get yourself in a place where you start to have affection for, for the sympathy of others in your life. You do. We do it. We all do it. We start getting, getting to where we're like, oh, you know, poor old, poor old me. And, and, and God is saying, I'm here with you. I, there, there's more for you to do. I got something greater at work, at work in your life. Can you just acknowledge that with me for a minute? Can you just, just, just take a moment and set your affection on things above instead of things on the earth? Amen? Ooh, did I just quote another scripture verse? I did. Mm-hmm. Hebrews 11.1 1 says, Now faith. Did you know that faith is always now? Yeah. Did you know that? Amen. Faith is, the, is not tomorrow and it's not yesterday. Did you know the Spirit of God uh, is, is not in yesterday and it's not in tomorrow? It's in now? With the Spirit of God, it's only now. Yeah, he was yesterday. And yes, he's, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever, but he's always right now in this moment. In the future, he's already there. He, and so when I get to the future, he already knows what I'm going to need when I get there. In my past, he was there too. I don't know why it had to be like that, but you know what? He was there then too. Amen. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. With God, there's no past, no future, just now. For by it, I love this verse. I'm going to preach a message on this verse one day. 11, 2, it says, it says, for by it, why don't, you, why don't you read it with me? For by it, by faith, for by it, the elders obtained a good report. By faith, the elders obtained a good report. Somebody went before me. Somebody went through something worse than me. Someone, someone been, been at it a lot longer than I, and they, they, they obtained a good report by faith. Faith, by faith. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were made of things which were not made of things which do appear. Take another look. God is doing something. That's what I want to declare to you. Take another look. God is doing something. Just because you can't see it right now doesn't mean he isn't doing something i got to release it, amen? i got to drop it so that I don't find myself offended with God. Offended with God. I, I, I believe that God's people should have a big mouth. I believe that. I believe that we should have a big mouth. We should be saying, God is good. And God is good all the time. I believe that we should be saying, I believe that God can do anything. I, I, God, He picked me up from a miry clay. He, sta- he set me my feet upon a rock and He established my direction. I, man, you should have seen me before I got saved. I, you should have seen me wo- before I, 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 I went through this, right? You should have seen me when I was in the bar. You should have seen me when I was doing whatever it was I was doing. But look at what God did. Look at what the Lord has done. Look at what He's done in my life. Instead, we're like this. (laughs) They said something bad. You know, someone said something bad on on Facebook the other day. They put a comment on 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 under my sermon, and they said and a bunch of cuss words and everything else. Okay, and I said to myself, I said, "Woo! Look what the Lord has done. Hey, look what the Lord is. If, If I offended them, hey." Hey, that means I'm on the right path. Yeah. I don't care what they say anymore. <laughs> Come on, I, I, I'll offend 100 million people. There's like 330 some million people in, in the U.S., okay? Yeah. All right? And I, I, got, I got like a, uh, what, a couple thousand people on Facebook and a thousand some people on YouTube, okay? They, that is even half of 1%. They, they don't even know my name. And you know what? Even if they put a comment on there, it doesn't matter what they say anyways. They still don't know who I am. I got Jesus on the inside. I got the Spirit of God on the inside of me. And that's not even, that's not even persecution. It's just words from some person. <laughs> they probably don't have the muscle <laughs> to back up what they got going on on, the, on their fingers, right? Come on. Come on. 
And I'm not going to get offended by them anymore. Amen? But, 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 but I'm not going to get offended by, by y'all either, and by them over there either, or by the news, or by anything else. Because I believe that God is at work, and something is going to change. Amen? I, I want to see a soul saved. I want to see a body healed. Amen? I want to see something different. I've been doing this a long time. I was like 16 years old or something when I started preaching. I've been doing it a long time. A long time. Long enough, I should be better now, by now. Amen? But, but I know this. I know that if God called me to it, amen, He's going to take me through it, and God's going to do something great if I allow Him. If I, if I don't let offense... Moses couldn't talk. He was an outcast, a murderer, rejected by both his adopted family and his real family. But he was chosen by God. Come on, qualified by God. Joseph, Joseph was betrayed by his brothers. He was sold into slavery, forgotten by the very ones he would ultimately save he forgave them all and he framed his future amen, amen. <laughs> your dreams joseph declares to us your dreams are worth your discipline amen joshua teaches us that wherever you, we go and whatever place we find ourselves in we by faith must Stand strong and courageous, trusting God's word over our life. We walk by and not by. See, Gideon was a man of valor. <laughs> he was a man of valor hiding <laughs> from the army in the wine press, threshing wheat. Remember? Remember the story? He was hiding, and the angel came and said, Hey, Gideon, mighty man of war, mighty man of valor. And, and, and he was hiding in plain sight, afraid of, what, uh, uh, of, of, of how, how bad he would fail. He asked questions, too. He said, where are all the miracles that our father, forefathers had? Where, where are all the, 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 where's all the provision, right? My question is, when will you arise to the occasion? Today is the day that we must arise. We must arise today, not tomorrow, not when we feel better about it, not when it feels like it, it should. It, it must be today. Look, look, say it with me. Say, say it with me. We are the people of God, chosen for this moment. Right? And so, so Samson... He teaches us a lesson. He says, uh, whenever God is working mightily in your life, in your ministry, watch out for bad habits that will come to distract you, demolish your work and your future. Focus your faith. That has to be the lens we look through. Not accomplishments, not fame and not fortune, not strength. Amen? Ruth. Ruth was a wife, a refugee, but redeemed and restored. Ruth proves that God is never done, no matter what it looks like. God is at work in the process. Amen? So why don't you just say it with me? Say, I will, I will reproduce. reproduce. Come on. David, David, if the path seems to go forward and backwards to the palace and back to the plains, maybe to a cave, it just proves that you're normal. <laughs> Come on, say it with me. Say, I'm normal. <laughs> tell your neighbor right now. Look him straight in the eye and say, you look pretty normal to me. Come on, tell him. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. 
Because with God, I mean, God, God tells you some, it gives you direction, but it, it doesn't go from A to B. It's not like, zoop, it's like this. You're like, what are you doing, God? He's saying, I'm trying to see if you trust me. Come on, like David, let's say it. My heart, My heart is, after is after God's heart. God's heart. Amen? There, there's a, one more person I'm going to tell you now. I'm, I'm shut up. I'm almost done. Ready? There's one more person. Ezekiel. God sometimes will ask you strange questions. He'll say, he'll say, hey, Ezekiel, you see them, them bones over there? You see all them bones laying over there? Them dry bones? He said, he said, he said son of man, will, can these bones live? And Ezekiel looks at those bones and goes, You know God, right? And he says, he says like this, I don't know God, you know. And so he starts trusting the Spirit of God to do what is impossible in, in, to his own eyesight. Amen? Amen. This, this is where we got to get as a church. We got to get to a place where we're trusting God, not what we see, feel, smell, or think. Amen? I want, I want my body to serve the Spirit of God. Amen? I don't want to go through another church service, another day, another moment, trying to figure it all out on my own. I don't want to go through my life offended at God or what He took away from me or what He didn't give me or what it, how it looks right now. I don't want to go through the rest of my life like that. I want to walk by faith. I want to give my life to Him. Amen. I want to walk with Him today. Go ahead, stand with me. I'm, I'm really done. I'm really done. I just want to open this altar up right now. If you need prayer for something, I want, I want to open it up right now. Just come on forward, make your way forward. I believe that God is going to touch somebody today. I believe that he's going to touch you. This message today is about faith. This message is not about what we see, feel, or think. This message is here to move you off the fence. Amen? Back to affection. I want to be in a church where people are so in love with Jesus that it doesn't matter what you smell like or look like or think like. We're going we're gonna to allow you to come in because we want you to, you to be touched and transformed by the power of the Spirit of the living God. I felt Him here this morning. We were praying before service and I could feel the presence of God in this room before you guys even got here. I know that God wants to touch your life. I know that God wants to turn your life around. I know that he wants to give you joy on the inside of you. I know that he wants to give you peace on the inside of you. I know that he wants to, to, to put a new lens over your, your eyesight today so that you can begin to see by faith again. The same God who reached down, uh, uh, who, who took off his, his glory, right? and came as a, as a person in the flesh and was born of a woman and, and walked on a dusty planet called Earth, was tired and suffered. They drug him all the way to the cross. Uh, they, they whipped him, they beat him, they, they, they spit on him, they pulled the, the whiskers from his face, they pl placed a crown of thorns in his head and pushed it in deep. And he went all the way to the cross and he sat there. I, I like to always think of it this way. He, he sat on, the, on that cross, pushing up on that nail. And he was looking at me. And he was saying, I love you, Pastor Everett. I love you, whatever your name is. He said, I love you, I love you, I love you. Before you were born, I love you, I love you, I love you. I've made a way for you. I, 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 I'm here now in this moment in the pain and the suffering. 
giving my life so that you can receive something that you don't have to pay for. I want you to leave here free. I want you to leave here whole. I want you to leave here changed by the power of the Spirit of God. I don't want you to stay the same anymore. You know what? I hear the Spirit of God saying, don't stay the same. Don't stay the same. Don't stay the same. Don't look at it the same way anymore. Go ahead and be free. I've set you free. You're my child and you're free. You're free. You're free from that addiction. You're free from that. Whatever that was. You're free from it. You are free. You are free. You're not free because I say so. You're free because he says so. By the blood, by the sacrifice that was given. You're free. You're free. Stop trying to pay the temple tax. Come on. Stop trying to pay the temple tax. I'm going to pray for you, okay? And then whoever you are, come right up front here, okay? Come on, this altar is open. Edwin said it this morning. You've got to slap the altar at least, okay, on the way in, on the way out. Because that means you're responding to the Word of God. Amen? Come on. Come on. I know there's more. Come on. Come on. Come on. You feel it. You feel it. You're being called. Come on. You're being called. I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to pray for you right now. Woo. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on, just say it with me. Say, I declare that I am free. Come on, say it again. I declare that I am free. Here we go. In Jesus' name, I ask right now that you come and touch all the people, Father. Touch all of us, Father. All of us at the same time. Father, you can do whatever you want to do right now. I feel the presence of God, and I know that healing can happen. I know that freedom can happen. I know that bitterness can be broken. I know that uh, self-doubt, uh, fear can be broken. I know, that, I know that whatever it is needs to be broken right now can be broken. But Father, we apply the word of God that we heard today. We apply this message today over our life. And Father, we plead the blood of Jesus over us right now. And Father, we're going to say it together. Heal us. Come on. Heal us. Come on, say it like that. Say, heal me. Completely. Today. Right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. So I bind the devil right now. I rebuke every voice that is not of him. I, I cast down the spirit of witchcraft, the spirit of religion, the spirit of whatever happened in our experience. I come against all of that right now and I say freedom reigns in this house because the spirit of God is here in this room. And so Father, move like you only know how to move, God. Change whatever you want to change from the front to the back, from the right uh, to the left, above us and beneath us. Father, I, 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 I implore the spirit of God to come and move freely in this place. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Joy is restored today. Peace is restored today. Hope is restored today. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Father, reveal now to us, God. Reveal now to us, God. Come on. What we're supposed to do, God. What we're supposed to do next, God. Reveal it to us. Speak to our heart. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on, just put your hand up right now. Just put your hand up. Just say it with me all together. Say, I, I receive everything I need. 
I receive it. Ooh. I receive it by faith. I'm going to walk by faith. I'm going to talk about it with faith. I'm going to see it by faith. I'm going to do it by faith. Ooh. I'm going to walk strong. Come on now. I'm going to talk. I'm going to be. I'm going to think different. Come on. I'm going to think like a child. I'm not going to think like a slave or a servant anymore. Amen? The things of the world are going to pass away, but what's in me is going to live forever. Amen? I got purpose. I got purpose. I got purpose. Amen? I got purpose. I got purpose. Amen? And if I got purpose, God will bring provision. Amen? God will bring direction. Amen? God will show me how. Amen? I don't have to beg Him for it. He's going to give it to me because I'm, a, I'm His child. I'm His child. Woo! Woo! Come on. The devil can't have me or my family. It's an eviction notice right now. It's an eviction notice. It's a, an eviction notice. The devil can't have me or my family. It's an eviction notice. Woo! There's a, there's a breaker spirit in the room. Come on now. The spirit of God comes. It breaks stuff. It breaks stuff. <laughs> Don't go home thinking it ain't going to be broken. Come on. It breaks stuff. It breaks stuff. It breaks stuff. Who? Oh! Right. <laughs> Woo. Woo. It's different now. It's different now. It's different now. It's different now. You're going to think different now. Because you are different now. You are different now. Come on, say it again. I'm different. I'm different. I'm different. I'm free. Ooh, I'm free. I'm free. Amen? Generational curses are broken right now in Jesus' name. I plead the blood over our life. Generational curses are broken right now. Lack is broken right now in Jesus' name. Lack is broken off my life right now in Jesus' name. It's broken. Amen? Abundance is coming. Amen? There's an abundance coming right now. There's an abundance coming. There's promotion coming. Somebody's getting a promotion. Come on. Somebody's getting a promotion tomorrow. Come on now. Someone's getting promoted tomorrow. Amen? Woo, I see a... I see. <laughs> Come on now. Someone's getting a raise. <laughs> Someone's getting a raise. Hey! Somebody's getting a new car. Come on. I receive it. Someone's going to get a new place to live. Amen? Amen. Come on now. Touch me right now. I agree with you. Amen? Where two or three agree is touching anything. Come on, God. Come on, God. A house. A house. Is anything too hard for the Lord? Is anything too hard for the Lord? Let me, say it, let me say it again over here. Is anything too hard for the Lord? No. See, we got to think different. Come on, we got to think different. Come on. We got to think different. This is my mom. This is my mom. You know why she come up here? Come on, she wants a healing in her body. Amen? She already got a healing in her body. She just got to walk it out, though, right? So can you hold your hands right now towards my mom? Just hold it out towards your mom. Hold the hands out. Let's all pray together. Ready? Andrea, can you come over here? Come over here. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Father, in, in Jesus' name, come on. Go ahead. And let, let the sister touch. Yep, there we go. Here we go. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, we believe that you're able to do exceeding abundantly above all we can think, ask, or imagine. So right now, in the presence of the, all these witnesses, Father, in, the, in, this, in this atmosphere charged by faith, we believe right now that Dorothy, my mom, is healed from the top of her head to the sole of her feet, Father. We bind, we bind everything that is out of alignment right now in her body, and we declare healing virtue right now is flowing from the top of her head to the sole of her feet, God. Father, that she'll walk and not be weary. She'll run Amen. and not faint. Amen. God, that she will, she will live every day 
every day that you've called her to be here on this planet, Father. And she will live it with strength, with grace, Father. And she will declare as a witness the great power of an almighty God who is at work in her life, God. Father, this is a witness, God. She's a witness, God. I'm a witness. Come on. We're all a witness. For t- today, right now, we believe that it is done. It is done. Glory. 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 Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Thank you, God. Come on. I thank you, God, for what you're doing in her life. Come on. Come on. And Lord, when the devil comes and tries to rob her peace and take away all the seed that has been sown into her heart, we say no. We say no. We say no. Doubt, leave her alone in the name of Jesus. Peace of God. Peace of God. Keep her heart and her mind in Christ Jesus. Great peace beyond all understanding. Consume her in the name of Jesus. Fire of God, burn away that which is not of you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I, I want you to, to take note. Do you feel the love of God in this room? Do you feel it? This is what the family of God is like. We don't all look the same, but we are all together. Amen? One family. One family. Amen? Amen? May God, may God bless every one of you from the top of your head to the sole of your feet. May your life never be the same. Come on. Come on. May your life never be the same. From this day forward, establish a new heart inside of Victor. Come on. A new heart. Come on now. This is a man of God right here. This is a man of God right here. This is a man of God right here. Come on. This is a leader of men right here. Come on now. This is a leader of men here. Amen. There's a calling on your life. There's a calling on your life. In the name of Jesus, Father, we just, we just ask that you touch him from the top of his head to the sole of his feet, Father. Father, that you stir up, God, the gift that is in him, God. In the name of Jesus, we ask, Father, that you move upon him, God. Speak to him, God. Open his mind. Open his ears. Open his eyes. Open his heart, God. Fill him, God. In Jesus' name. That he'll never be the same, God. That he'll walk different from this day forward, Lord. As he walks out the door, God, he's going to feel lighter. Father, he's going to hear your voice, God. He's going to know how to be a dad. He's going to know how to be a husband. He's going to know how to be a businessman, God. Father, weigh him in the balance today, God. Take away the things that need to be taken away. But give him the things he needs, Father, to, to, to be. To be, God. Ho. Ha, ha. Come here, come here. Touch him, touch him. Come on, Elise. Come on. Come on, touch him, touch him right there. She said, she said, she said, be whole. She said, be whole. Be whole. Woo! 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 Come on. Come on. Come on. You see what that is? She, she has a gift. And she let it flow into you, my brother. Woo. Woo. Come on. Come on. If you've got, you got a gift, listen, listen to me. If you've got a gift, you have to let it flow. If you don't let it flow, you're a stagnant pond. And God won't, God, it, all you do is stink. Amen? All you do is stink. It's time, it's time to flow. Say it with me. It's time to flow. Come on. It's time to flow. It's time to flow. It's time to flow. Right, Larry? It's time to flow, man. Come on. It's time to flow. 
Curtis, Mr. Curtis, and Mr. Curtis. I got two Mr. Curtises. And it's time to flow. Amen? It's time to flow. Come on, we got something to do. We got something to do. Woo, what's that? What's that word? 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 I, I'm new and I got something to do. How's it go? Come on. I, I, I know God is not through with me. God has to call me up. Come on. Not knowing exactly what it is, but here I am. Lord, use me. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. You know, you know Isaiah said the same thing? Isaiah said to me. He said, he said, I, I, he, the Spirit of the Lord said, he said, he said, who will go for us? And Isaiah said what? He said, he said, uh, I can't go, I can't go because I got unclean lips. And so the angel went to the, to the altar, right? Took the tongs, took a coal, and he come and touched his lips. He come and touched his lips. He cleansed the words that were coming out of his mouth. Not just before, but after, amen? And, he, and then Isaiah said, here am I, send me, he said. Here am I, send me. That's a now statement. Come on now. That's a now statement. That's not a tomorrow statement. That's a now statement. We, we got to go now. Amen. Here am I right now. Send me. Here am I right now. Send me. Here am I. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. We will never be the same. This church is never going to be the same from this day forward. It's never, it don't matter where you come from. Come on now. Because we all done come from a lot of different places. It don't matter where we're going, but we're going to heaven in the end, right? But God called us here now. Here right now. <laughs> I got one more thing and then I'll be quiet. On Tuesday, on Tuesday I came, to, we had prayer on Tuesday night, and we were sitting in here in prayer, and I, I was in the back where my dad is sitting over there. I was just sitting in there, and I was on my knees, and I was just praying, yeah. and I felt the Spirit of God all, 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 almost the whole time. And I got done, when we got done, and I just felt this unction, and I felt like I had to read something. So I came up here, and I read 2 Timothy 1, verse 7. It says, uh, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and a sound mind. And then I stopped and I said, because I forget, we always forget about verse 6. Verse 6 says, it says, it says, Timothy, Paul's begging Timothy. He says, Timothy, I want you to remember something. I want you to remember something. Say, say it with me. Say, remember. He, he said, I want you to remember uh, the gift that you have inside of you. I want you to remember that you've got to stir it up. Come on, do it like this with me. You got it. Who has to stir it up? We do. You do. We do. It's your responsibility to stir up your faith because there's a gift inside of you and you've got to stir it up and you've got to fan it. And you know how it got put in you? Listen, listen. God put it in you, but someone prayed for you too. Someone prayed for you. Amen? Someone prayed for you. Someone prayed for you. Someone prayed for you. Someone prayed for you, Gigi. Gigi. Someone prayed for you. 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 Come on, someone prayed for you. Someone prayed for you. Stir up the gift and then believe it. Amen? And walk it out. Remember that you have it on the inside. Remember that there's something at work in your life. Remember you got somewhere you're going. Amen? Drop the offense and go to war against the devil. Amen? Amen. Amen.